Okay, getting ready to pull this motor out of here. Um, really easy though, like I had mentioned before. So we have a few lines to disconnect. Fuel lines here, we have a, um, this is the return line on the top, the bottom one is the feed. Um, so feed and return on the fuel lines. The air compressor main line has to come off. That's where it sends air to the bus. There'll be a, an air line that goes here to the air governor that's gotta come off. Um, this is a coolant line that's attached to the engine, so that'll stay with the compressor. This hose needs to come off here, which was a, a fresh air intake for the generator there to cool it. Um, this will stay on the wall. This is the shutdown, so this air line here needs to come off. Um, this, the electrical connections that go from the alternator... They're not even hooked up. Um, so that's already done. <laughs> so yeah, that's all already disconnected there. So yeah, the starter cables, just just a few little things and then there's not too much for it to come out. And like I said, there's just four, four connecting points. Uh, there's two bolts on each of the ones on the bottom. It's like a little U bolt. And then the, the one bolt here and one bolt there. And this thing comes right out. So four attaching points and then just the miscellaneous hoses and cables that go to it. So a few lines here. One, two, should be fingerless now. I'm gonna try to prop these up so the one that goes back to the tank, at least the, the supply line, doesn't drain all the way back to the tank. It, it does make a little bit of a challenge to reprime it when you, when you lose prime all the way back to the tank. There's supposed to be a check valve there and I'm gonna have faith in it that it's working. Uh, but if it's not, I will lose prime all the way back to the tank. And we know how exciting that can be if you've not seen the video where I pressurized the gas tank or the fuel tank and then it, it like burped and exploded fuel all over me and the wall. This fuel line needs to be replaced because it's a crunchy sucker. But yeah, just get them up out of the way like that. The other air compressor, it's disconnected here so it'll just be easier to disconnect here uh, on the inline or the outlet there. Uh, it's gonna be a different size wrench. Okay. Governor. This is the sensing line, so when the tank gets up to a certain pressure, this is where it detects it to shut the air compressor off, is what this does. Or when to turn it back on when the pressure gets low enough up front. And you adjust it, the pressure uh, on the bottom of this thing here, if you take that off, you can tighten or loosen it and it'll raise your, you know, if it cuts off at 110 or 120. The shutdown is already disconnected. That's gonna go with the bus. That's gonna stay. Oil line, that one's gonna be 916. I'm disconnecting the tachometer drive. Just taking off the lower radiator hose. Can you see that there? Couldn't get a wrench on this one. I don't have my glasses on, I think it's round. It. One extra step on this one because they have the wiring going to the bumper here, which is going to come off with the cradle for the trailer hitch. So I just got to remove this. And then I think I have every connection on the engine disconnected. There's usually one or two things you forget until the end, but I got the ground. The ground was already disconnected when the transmission came out. All the linkages to the train. Oh, no, I have one more thing. Um, the throttle linkage attaches to the back of the block there. I gotta disconnect that. Hopefully this thing will snake through without clearance issue. That's welded on there. Okay, I just have a couple things to disconnect on the radiator here. The mount where the radiator hangs on the bus there, because the radiator will come out with the cradle, because you know the fan's in the shroud and everything on there. So that's still gonna have to come out. Um, so we're almost there. This is where the 
brought a linkage bolts to the block here. So this is how the rear cradle bolts come off. These, these two here, this little clamshell, and the other side is a hook that hooks on there. So there's no nut on the other side. It goes into a threaded hole. So hopefully they'll come right off. I've had them where they're seized. We had to heat them up with a torch. Um, sometimes it's not very fun. But we'll see how it goes here. ready to come out unless there's something I forgot <laughs> so this is our replacement radiator and I mentioned the other day this is not an original 4104 radiator uh, if we measure the inside of this intake here that's an inch and a half opening on the inside that's where all the water the coolant is coming into the radiator now let's measure Kelly I want you to measure this one Measure this one here. And that's two inches. So we're losing a half inch of restriction size to go to that new radiator, and I'm not willing to do that. So we're gonna stick with the old one for now. I got this new uh, four ton floor jack from Harbor Freight. Seems to be pretty good quality. So far, it's done pretty good. So 8,000 pounds lifting capacity. I'm gonna put it on the back side of the cradle back there. Um, so when I go to take it out, cause I'm not gonna be able to get the forks all the way under when I first lift it. So I wanna be able to separate it and I should be able to drag it back on that a little bit. Um, and then, uh, then re-grab it with the whole forklift. But uh, I just got these two bolts at the top to remove and this thing is ready to come out. Okay, I gotta remove these air struts and then I have to remove this rear tailgate and the wiring for it. Uh, these bolts are in where I can't just knock them off because of the tailgates in the way. They're both that way. So the tailgate has to come off. Plus the forklift might have hit it anyways. So.
Maybe the little hammer's moving. So. start it up. I'm going to let the whole thing down. It should pivot. So this side will come down and it's going to, the hooks in the back are still going to hold it. So just the bumper is going to come towards the ground. Okay. Okay. We're totally on. That looks good. There's a. I had a hose hooked on the radiator still on the bottom. It was disconnected and it was loose. I it just had to pull off. It may still actually be on though.
is a hose or something, but you said it's disconnected? blocks for under it. You can see how that engine cradle hooks on that. So there's just a like a half clamshell that goes over it, and there's another one on that side, and that's it. That's all that holds the weight on the back end. Uh, I'm gonna get in here. That's the generator exhaust, and it really messed me up because it was a solid piece. I had to cut it. It's one solid piece, and I couldn't get to anything on it to make it so I'll have to put a clamp on it to, to repair that but a lot of build up on it but yeah we'll get in here and clean this as best we can and we'll inspect all this mounting and everything here make sure there's no cracks or rivets coming off or any of that kind of stuff I mean it's not even something you can see right now it's so buried if it was damaged So, getting this cleaned up will be job number one. Here's the interior access panel up there. That was the one I needed to get to. Just my initial observations, I don't see, oh, there's a bird's nest. Um, I don't see anything crazy wrong. Normally you would see like a crack coming up here or these rivets popping, something coming off down here. Stuff, stuff like that's what I wanna look for. But uh, now's the time to clean it because you'll never have this kind of access to it again. But uh, one thing that we talk about uh, on these GM buses especially is towing. We say not to do it because the trailer hitch is always mounted out here on the engine. But the only, you know that's holding the bottom of the engine, the weight coming down. Everything else here where you put the tow hitch when you have a lot of tongue weight is just supported off this roof line which is just cantilevered over there. Um, so 500 pounds of tongue weight is kind of what people say not to, not to do any more than that on here, or you risk ripping your roof off on your bus. You know, that's a long distance that thing's hanging out there and 500 pounds of tongue weight times, you know, every time you hit a bounce, a bump or something like that, it's just ripping on the roof up here. So you gotta be real careful with that. And hopefully you can understand now that nothing is holding that engine in except for the roof line on it. Um, hey, look at these, these mud dabbers, what the heck? That is huge. I had a funny thing on. <laughs> yep, that's hot. Gross. Um, I had a really funny thing on Lance's bus. We were working on it. I'm like, oh, look, there's an old wasp nest. And I grabbed it and pulled it off. It was not an old wasp nest. And a whole bunch of wasps flew out of it and they flew right towards Kelly, unfortunately. Yeah, so funny. 
<laughs> she didn't think it was funny, but I couldn't believe it. I, I just, I'm like, oh, that's old. And I grabbed it and just pulled, it was a huge one. I just ripped it right off and a whole bunch of them were in it. I don't know how I didn't see that. I didn't have my glasses on, but it looked old, but it wasn't. It was very funny. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Kelly says, no, it wasn't. All right, well, I got this half of the bulkhead cleaned. Uh, it looks pretty good. I don't see any issues with it. Uh, I got some stuff down here to catch on my mess. But yeah, no, everything looks good there. So there's a remote grease fitting right here that hasn't been hit in years. I'm gonna make sure it still works. Um, this goes up and gets all the bell cranks for the shift linkages, the, um, the clutch linkage. All that is located right there and the emergency parking brake is what that is. So um, those all need to make sure they get greased or they go bad. So if you have a 4104, make sure you get that grease fitting. But uh, yeah, I'll continue to clean over here, but that's quite an improvement. Oh. Okay, just a little bit of work to do to get these ready to go, but there's the, the one that's gonna go in, the running takeout, and then the used not so good motor over there. But, uh, Gotta get the bumper off there and some other stuff, but it looks pretty good there. We're gonna cover these up for the night. There's still plenty of usable parts on that engine that we gotta go through. That tailgate's in really bad shape. Um, I'm gonna ask him if he wants me to take it to a welder and have somebody fabricate to repair it since it's already off. It's gonna be half the fight having it off already. But that will soon be in that. So just getting ready to pick up here for the night. So the tractor actually is not the right tool, even though it's got forks on it. A, a forklift is so superior, what we needed to do to, to get that engine cradle in and out. We can make it work, but it's very difficult. So for one, whenever you raise the front end of the tractor, it goes up like that. So your fork angle changes as you go up or down. Um, so you're constantly making adjustments. There is no feather adjustment. On, I used to load freight into airplanes with a forklift. I'm very good at operating a forklift. You know, we, I could put it in the side of an airplane, you know, 20 feet in the air through a cargo door that's very, very small. No problems. This thing, when it's got weight on it, you cannot feather it at all. Even if you raise the throttle up, it doesn't make a difference. It just goes or doesn't go. You don't, you don't have that really light feather movement like you do on a forklift. Plus, we won't have the side shift on it. So when we get it, when we load it in, it has, it has to be absolutely perfect or within like a quarter inch. It's going to take a while. I'm, I'm going to see if I can get somebody to come out and give me a hand, uh, another set of eyes besides just me and Kelly. Um, and I think I'm going to set the weight on that uh, floor jack and let it kind of roll in on the backside on that floor jack as well. The forks are too long to go all the way up under because they will hit the bulkhead and I can't have that. So um it's it's gonna t and i need to keep the weight all the way back as much as i can because we're pretty close to the limits on the tractor with it i mean the rear tires aren't coming off the ground or anything and the end the hydraulics aren't struggling at all you know it's not whining or maxing out or anything like that it's just not really good for really and and it's a manual transmission you know you you gotta you know with the clutch you can go forward just a little bit or you you don't have the kind of control you do with a forklift where you can just kind of just just nudge it and go just a little bit. You don't have that. It's either go, uh, you're, you're either moving or not moving in this thing. Um, it's just not a, a high finesse, really tight. It's not made for that, but we can get it done with this. It's, you know, if I have to go out and rent a forklift, it's gonna cost over a thousand dollars would be my guess, even for just for a day uh, by the time it gets delivered and everything. So I can save them some money. We'll just have to take our time. Uh, another set or two of eyes on it. Um, we'll be able to get it in there. Uh, but I, I know it'll do it and we'll be able to do it and it's not going to be an issue, but just before people complain, oh, you're terrible with the tractor. It's not the right tool for the job. It's not, it's not made for that. If I had a forklift, I could do it. No problem. 10 minutes right in. Boom. This doesn't work like that. His tools, check the air and all those duels. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Well,
But he's got a long, hard ride in old Lenny the Silver Sides. Get that bus grease monkey on the road. Well, he's got that hammer down and that 47 hound. It's that bus grease monkey on the road. He travels all around and he's coming to your town. Get that bus grease monkey down the road. With the propped up engine door Watch that bus grease monkey do his thing Thirty years behind that barn Cause it don't run worth a darn Watch that bus grease monkey make it sing He knows in Detroit there's no doubt Upside down and inside out It's that bus grease monkey don't you know Saving buses far and wide In that old blue silver sides It's that bus grease monkey don't you know He's moved his family to the hills of Tennessee. Watch that bus grease monkey make his home. Bringing buses back to life with the help of his dear wife. Watch that bus grease monkey get it done. Well, he travels town to town working on them old greyhounds. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide in old Lenny the Silver Sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know?